In this video, we are going to talk about how plants reproduce. Flowers are organs made of tissues of similar cells. Flowers are responsible for plants' reproduction. Some plants can reproduce without flowers. In your notes page, you will have to label the parts of a flower, and in other slides, there will be other diagrams to do this. The petals are often the most colorful tissues of a flower. Animals may be attracted to a plant by the petals. Not every flower has showy petals. The tassels at the top of a corn plant and ears of corn are flowers. The stamen is the male part of a flower. Pollen, a grainy, often yellow powder, is made in a tissue at the top of each stamen. A single flower may have many stamens. The anther is at the tips of stamens, and they are the parts that make the pollen. Here is a picture of pollen stuck to a bee. The pistil is the female part of the flower. A pistil often has a bottle shape with a wide bottom and a narrow neck. A flower may have more than one pistil. In your notes page, you will have to label all three parts of the pistil. Not all flowers have both stamens and pistils. Flowers with only one of these parts are called imperfect flowers. Some maple trees have imperfect flowers. Flowers with both parts are called perfect flowers. The passion flower shown here is a perfect flower. Composite flowers. Sunflowers are in the family of composite flowers. At first glance, this looks like one big flower. If you take a closer look, the sunflower is actually made of hundreds of tiny flowers. The stigma is the sticky part or the top part of the pistil. Please label this in your notes page. The sepals are the small leaf-like parts of a flower at the bottom near the stem. The sepals protect the developing flower. The petals are usually the most colorful part parts of the flower. The pollinators and animals are attracted by the petals' colors and scents. The stamens are the male reproductive parts of the flower. Pollen is produced at the anther or the top and at the top and the stem like is the filament. The pistils are the female reproductive parts of the flower. A pistil consists of the sticky stigma at the top, a slender tube called the style, and a hollow structure at the bottom called the ovary. These are all of the parts you need to label in your notes. Plants must have a way to reproduce before they die. If a species did not reproduce, it would soon become extinct. When plants reproduce, they make new plants that usually look like their parents. They have the same shapes of flowers and leaves. For this to happen, plants must have a reliable way to pass information from one generation to the next. This information is in DNA. DNA contains all the information for making flowers, leaves, and every part of the plant. Sexual reproduction is the passing of DNA from two parents to their offspring. In plants, flowers are the organs where sexual reproduction takes place. Here, the bee is moving the pollen from the stamen to the pistil, causing sexual reproduction and pollination. Pollination can involve the stamen and pistil of the same plant or of two different plants. Here are some pictures of pollinators, hummingbirds, butterflies, bats, and bees. Here's the diagram again of the parts of a flower. Make sure you have these parts labeled in your notes. Once pollination takes place, a tube grows from the pollen down to the egg cells in the bottom of the pistil. Special, egg cells, special cells called sperm cells travel down the tube and join the egg cells. This joining of cells is called fertilization. 
Fertilization is the first step in the life of a new plant. A seed is made of three main parts, the seed coat, embryo, and endosperm. A seed coat is a covering that has two roles. It protects new plant, a new plant called an embryo. The seed coat also guards a stash of stored food called endosperm. An embryo has structures called seed leaves or cotyledons. The seeds of some plants have one cotyledon. These plants are called monocots. Plants that have seeds with two cotyledons are called dicots. Here is a chart of monocots and dicots. You will be labeling the parts in your notes. Here is parts of a monocot seed that you will be labeling in your notes. A monocot seed, like corn, has one area of stored food. A dicot such as a bean, has two areas that are easily split apart. Again, diagrams of the dicot and monocot seed that should be labeled in your notes. Ways that seeds spread. In some plants, seeds just plop onto the ground and begin to sprout. Scattering seeds is not always that simple. Remember how some animals will help, were helpful in pollination? They also help plants by scattering seeds. Animals may spread seeds that are inside tasty fruit. For example, when animals eat berries, the berry seeds might pass through the animal's digestive system. The seeds might sprout far from the original plant. What other ways do you know that seeds can be spread? Many plants can reproduce without sperm cells and egg cells. This kind of reproduction is called asexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, there is only one parent. Since all genetic information comes from one parent, the offspring will normally have the same genes as the parent. Many plants can reproduce asexually by growing new plants from their stems or roots. Spider plants are common house plants that can be reproduced by growing new plants on long stems called runners. Strawberries also can reproduce in this way. Many types of grass will spread by growing new plants from underground roots. All of these plants can also reproduce with seeds. As its name hints, duckweed is a tiny plant that floats on ponds and is food for ducks and other birds. Duckweed is one of the smallest flowering plants, but it reproduces mostly by a kind of asexual reproduction called budding. Little buds form on the plant and drop off to grow as separate plants. You have a lot of information in this video, but the main things I want you to take away is the parts of a flower and the parts of a monocot and dicot seed as labeled in your notes.